if you are currently are doing really well with the champion and your last 20 games are going positive with you know a d any top then i no matter how low that would be on a tier list i would still have you play it if it's working for you right now yo star peoples this is going to be my first video on tier lists where i you know attack up tier list in a way that is i think is most effective for actually helping you climb we're going to focus on the archetypes of each champion and if you haven't already you have to reference the archetypes video i'll post that somewhere on the video so you can go go to it and the important part about this tier list here is that you try to understand your own personal archetype and then attach that to the archetypes uh i'm putting in my tier list and i know just from my experience that most players that play the game don't r really know their own archetype they jump around too much and there's not enough clear data to really push you towards an archetype and for that to learn how to really understand your own archetype you're gonna have to watch my a different video on statistics which might be out when I make this video I'm not sure when I'm gonna publish this um, but otherwise you can just use your best knowledge by looking at your own OP GG if I'm streaming you can post me your OP GG there and I can help you uh, on stream to figure out something to keep in mind about the tier list I'm gonna show you is that number one I'm only going over the proactive archetypes the things that are much more common much more reliable to use to win your games not saying that like you can't wave clear to be significant in your game or disengage to be significant, but proactive archetypes are most likely uh, the reason why you're going to be winning your games, and so or at least on average. And so I'm going to go over those only. If you think I should go over the other archetypes, let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely just going to go over proactive archetypes in this video. Another thing is that um, my I'm not grading every single champion. I'm trying to give the adv like advice I would give to you if I was like actually working with you, which is pushing you towards the the champions that are doing like the best in the archetype uh, especially if you're trying to figure out your archetype and you don't currently have something that you're doing then if you switch to a champion that's doing very well in the, in the current meta that is significantly into one archetype that's a pretty good indication of whether you're good at the archetype because you're playing someone a champion that's definitely good in the meta and so if you're really good at that archetype as well it should click very quickly like you shouldn't go through too big of a rut before you figure out whether you're doing well in that champion or not an important note about just re tier list in general is that while it's good for like gathering the information what's really important is that you climb right at least that's for me what's important for me because i imagine if you're looking at tier lists trying to see what's good and trying to climb um and we want i want you to climb and so when you're looking at tier lists and you're, you're getting ideas of what you should do still make sure you evaluate what you're currently doing like you shouldn't stop doing things that are already working for you uh, if that's not obvious but i've seen it in basically every profile review I've ever done where if someone just stops playing a champion they're doing well on either because the meta changes or because pro players are playing something different or maybe because your champion got nerfed on the current patch but that's those all those reasons are not reason to actually stop playing your champion the, the reason to stop playing your champion are numbers which again is going to be referenced in my statistics video another thing to remember about tier lists is that the tiers ultimately don't matter if you understand yourself uh, or you've created a champion pool and or if you have data on lower tier champions like if you are currently are doing really well with the champion and your, your last 20 games are going positive with you know a d any top then i no matter how low that would be on a tier list i would still have you play it if it's working for you right now like again you shouldn't make changes based on uh the tier list unless what you're currently doing isn't working you're trying to look for something new there we go. All right, so here's my tier list. This is again the main the main proactive archetypes in the game. I've graded them in terms of tiers, so it's not all in order. Like I, I'm not sure if I think Fizz is better than Vi or whatever. They're just different in different tiers of what I think are the most reliable champions for if you're good at this archetype. That you should try these out. So here we have backline. Also, I've graded them in like. Normally, Burst Assassins are very similar champions. Pick and Gage are very similar, and Juggernaut Splitfoot are very similar. And then Backline kind of encompasses most of the Control Mages, a Marksman, and that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna go left to right here. So we're when we're looking at Backline, we have Jin who's doing very very well. Jin and Ash again, two Backline um, like pick ish champions, and. I think that's also really important to go over here is because some of these champions like Fizz is who's having multiple archetypes is if he's doing well then 
this goes back to the archetype video. Champions who have multiple archetypes are typically not extremely good in one archetype, and they're more so, you know, they split their power amongst them. And so sometimes when they're doing really well, it could be because you're split pushing very often with Fizz, as opposed to you're sitting in bushes and bursting people with Fizz, if that makes sense. So it, it can be tricky when champions with multiple archetypes, like Ari, are doing well in the meta, because why they're doing well might not be because of the one specific archetype you're good at. So that that is going to cause some variance on when you try a champion, you might not do as well on them. Although I think those are some of the best time to learn. Because if you're like a very good, let's say, pick player, and you're playing Ari, and you're not doing well on Ari, then whenever she's doing well on the meta, then it must be that you're not using some, some other part of Ari. You must have like such a deficiency on that it doesn't make up for the fact that you're doing well on the pick archetype. And so I actually find that to be a very good learning experience whenever you don't perform well on a champion that you think you should based on your your current archetype. Anyway, so... I'm not sure if you... If, Alright, so the patch that hit on 1014 was, wasn't was actually like that significant of a patch. It's going to change some things. The most the biggest question mark uh, on the tier list is going to be where's Volibear changing? Uh, based on the attacks being nerfed and I talked about it on stream But whenever they change like a base stat a lot of the items in the game scale off of your base stats So it's it's not just that you're losing that initial um, Like health or that initial attack speed It's that all the items that would scale with attack speed that would give you additional attack speed even all the all the um, Abilities in the game or passive that that scale off attack speed are getting nerfed And so when you start thinking of it in that way you start realizing when base stats are changed it, it lowers the efficiency, like gold efficiency, of most of the items that your champion are going to build that go towards that stat, if not all the items. Um, and that's why it becomes a bigger deal than it seems. Alright, anyway, going back to backline champions, that we have all the natural ma marksmen um, in Jin, Ash, Jinx. So you can see that backline has the highest grade of uh, A tier uh, champions, which is pretty good if you're a backline right now. You have some marksman options. Uh, you have Lulu, um, and it could be mid, could be top, could be support. Uh, Soraka for support. Teemo for, could be top middle. Could most likely should be playing top middle. And then Ari, of course, uh, middle. So we have some options there. Not that many options in the jungle, and I'd, I'd have to go look. Normally the jungle is going to be things like Karthus, if you're trying to be a backline. Uh, assuming you're playing Karthus in that way. Uh, which Karthus did get uh, pretty, he got changed, so he's also buffed. I was I consider what happened the cards on the patch of buff, um, and he wasn't doing insanely bad. I mean I mean he was pretty bad. He was like down forty seven percent win ratio overall, but I do think it was a, a decent buff. So we'll, we have to see where Karthus ends up. Brand is solid. He just has a lower sample size, and so I don't I'm not as sure with him as I am with the rest of these champions. But he's definitely solid, and these are all doing well, especially Annie. But the sample size is really low, and that's what all the asterisks are, are, is that the sample size is pretty dang low. But they could be sleeper. The same thing, I think, uh, with Skarner, where Predator just got buffed, and Skarner was one of the first champions I looked up that uses actually uses the Predator. And he was already doing okay. Again, super low sample size, because not that many pe people play Skarner right now. But he was doing okay. And a low sample size doesn't necessarily mean they're actually a lower winner show. It could mean they're a high winner show. It just means we don't have enough data to be, you know, sure. And so, when when a champion that was doing okay gets buffed, he could be a sleeper pick for sure. So if if Scarn is like a champion you've done well with in the past, and you're not, uh, and you're looking for something to go back to, it could be a good patch to go back to Scarner for sure. To go look at burst champions here, we're looking at Fizz Vibrand. All makes sense. Uh, Diana, Teemo, Ari. Again, this depends on how you build the champion. Like for example, Diana is also going to be um, in the split push and in the juggernaut. So, as I'm talking about again, this, this is why you have to understand archetypes. And as I talk about in the archetypes video, your champion generally is going to have their own archetypes. But depending on the champion, it really can be impacted a lot by what runes and uh, masteries you have. Or no, sorry, not masteries anymore. Runes and items that you have, and so just keep that in mind. If you if you're gonna play Ari and have the intention of split pushing, for example, and you're not building Lich Bane to go split push, um, if you're playing split push Ari and you're only split pushing to get CS, but you're not actually pushing to get towers, 
yet again you have to make sure you're actually playing your out that archetype and it's an efficient way or, or else this will be skewed you know it won't be as as direct as it should be again that's why you have to really try to understand your own personal archetype before you um try to overly apply tier list in general to be honest okay so wukong just got nerfed on this patch uh but he was doing fine like he would have been a b if not for this um if not for the nerf but he again was generally doing well he got 0.15 seconds off of his knock up which again applies twice of a what was a 70.75 second knock up and so it, it's pretty significant really uh if you think of that that in terms of percentages like it's pretty high percentage nerf uh especially because it applies twice now i think what's important i maybe should have put an ashes on assassin is because these champions have there's like a lower bar to assassins assassins have the highest like delta in the game meaning like players that are very good at these champions win a lot and players who are not very good at this champ these champions all have like negative almost all of them have negative win ratios um and so it's keep that in mind when you're looking at assassin this being a b or a c in assassin is not the same as being a c in backline where like all these champions have good win ratios these champions don't all have like good win ratios they're just passable uh, and they also have lower sample sizes. So for burst, we have uh, a few options for I think every role. I guess I could put Jin in this list. Jin is a burst. He's not a significantly insane burst, but he would be the best option in terms of being a burst AD carry. Twitch is actually doing fine here, and you can also consider him a burst uh, the same way that um, Jin would be. So I think it'd be reasonable to think about it in this way is Jin on this level yeah he is actually Jim's like doing great last patch he wasn't changed so um we have some we have a marksman option top do we have a jungle option yeah wukong if we're gonna play wukong you have a couple of jungle options not as good in the jungle i guess we don't have that many junglers in general oh wait oh yeah vi yeah vi was uh doing pretty solid actually so if you're a pig bird champion or a player like vi right now is looking hot so definitely want to try that out for assassins of course we actually have roles we have every role except support i believe um and so we're pretty solid with assassin with pick we have support jungle 80 yeah, we're, we're all good with support or with pick sorry uh so we have all the roles covered so you should have some this is why i always talk about like roles don't matter because if the way you see the game with like i'm gonna sit in this bush I'm gonna wait for someone to get out of position and then I'm gonna use my pick ability, whether that's a blitzcrank pull or I'm going to WQ on brand, um, or I'm gonna wait for someone to get out of position in on our 5v5, and then I'm gonna alt with Vi or flash W? Is it W on Galio? Um, or do it with Sona, Ramus, whatever. Like that that thought process in your mind is the same with all these champions. So long like doing the correct pick. It's going to be the same in each champion. You're just going to execute it slightly differently. Now, engage. There's not that many engage champions in the game. Um, at least there's a lot of people can who can theoretically engage, but there's not that many people who can engage uh, reliably. And so there's this list is almost always going to be pretty small. Luckily, we have a good amount of options, especially for top and jungle. But that's just natural for the role. Um, just like with. I also consider Twitch an engage. I forgot to add him on here. His his engage is a little bit more niche, but it is true. Um, I mentioned in the archetypes video where when when Twitch opens up on you, whenever he starts alting through your team, and the enemy team either runs away. Actually, I didn't men I didn't mention this example in that video. So this is a new example, but I've used this in a previous lessons before. When the, your targets run away, whenever you start spraying, or when they start you know directly targeting us twitch those are two forms of cc being fear and being taunt so twitch is ultimate if used correctly and your position correctly to hit multiple targets acts as if it's an aoe fear or taunt so that's why he's an engaged champion and that's very reliable right like you don't twitch doesn't open up and everyone just ignore him that like never happens that's so it's very reliable um although if you read the abilities you would you it wouldn't say it has a cc but the way it, it performs is as if it's an aoe cc which is more important again reality is more important than theory now when we're looking at the juggernauts we have again volibear is going to be a big question mark he was doing insane on the last pass so it's, it makes sense that he got nerfed but again just because he got nerfed doesn't mean he's bad now like he was rocking like 54 
percent win ratios. So like even a two percent nerf would still make him an A grade in any archetype that he would have. Now again, the attack base attack nerf is a big nerf. Um, it's hard for me to evaluate that without literally doing the math on everything, uh, which I'm not gonna do. Um, but I would guess he's still gonna be pretty good. And of course, again, if you're already doing well with him, his archetype. This is so important to understand actually. When a champion gets nerfed or buffed, like their archetype doesn't change, just how how well they perform in that archetype changes. So like if you're very good at being a juggernaut player, being a split push player, and you're you're rocking like a sixty percent win ratio in your last twenty or like last forty games of uh, Volibear, like you, you shouldn't overreact to something an archetype being nerfed. Especially if let's say you weren't split pushing very often with, with Volibear and his split spurts archetype was about the part of him that got nerfed, then that's like might not even be like that relevant to you. And so I I find people that overreact to patches like all the time. So try try not to fall into that trap and really look at your own um, your own numbers uh, at, as an individual. And if you need help, you can just stop by my stream and, I, and if you just post your OP, I'll, I'll I'll take a look for sure. All right. So uh, someone from stream informed me that Draven's doing pretty well last patch. He wasn't really changed on this patch, so you would expect him to be uh, doing decent again. I think I'll add him here. And then he'll be somewhere in this in this range as well. So Draven was doing not bad uh, on the last patch. Nothing was drastically changed about bot lane on the last patch, and because there were no item changes. Like normally when item changes happen, that can archetypes can change a lot, especially if runes change as well. But it was a pretty tame patch. Again, just like Predator got changed, I think in terms of uh, runes. And so most things that worked on the last patch are gonna do well on this patch. But it's really good if what you were already doing was working. Uh, so hopefully you don't need this video for a new champion. Uh, but if you do. That it's not that uncommon for the patches to not hit your champion, uh, at least not hit them in a, a sniffing way. Where if you're doing war well on them, that you should really stop playing them without even trying them on the new patch, which I almost never recommend really. But the last thing we have to go over here is uh, split push. Again, big question mark um, with Volibear, but I imagine he's still doing fine. Attack speed is definitely going to be a big like a, it's a bigger nerf. Like I just talked about earlier how nerfs can hit champions in different ways. The attack speed nerf is definitely going to hit um, him being a split pusher like pretty significantly because obviously attacking the tower with the attack speed is pretty significant for a split pusher. So, but we still have a top jungler, AD, or not, I actually don't have an AD on here because I don't think Bane was doing that, that hot uh, when I was looking through the numbers. And so not much of a marksman. We have every other role, except, again, most supports aren't going to split push, of course. And then, for I, I forgot to mention that on Juggernaut. So on Juggernaut, we have top jungle, mid, and most, again, supports and marksmen are just naturally not going to be Juggernaut, so unless you're playing off meta. Uh, which, again, it's, playing, it's fine to play off meta. Again, once you figure out your own archetype, playing what works is, like, so damn easy. It, like, you just play what you already know work, uh, what works for you, and then you just play that archetype in whatever role you want. Like... Once you know your archetype, the game is significantly easier to make make it so that you're playing at, at like one of your highest levels, uh, one of your highest points in the game. So like your base rank, like instead of like going all over the place in terms of, in terms of your rank, you, you should really start to. Uh, well, first you're going to climb, of course, once you figure out what you're doing best with. But once you hit that the plateau and of like where it's not just about being good at your archetype, but it becomes being more like informed about the game which you'll learn about on the channel um, or just your mechanics you shouldn't dip down too hard after that point because you're almost always and you should be consistently looking at the game through the same lens and so even if you're playing in different roles even if you're playing different champions so long as you're going through the same archetype you should find some high reliability in your results so another update from the stream I, I think Vayne actually is doing pretty reasonable um, where she was doing very well like well on the last pass for sure with a high pick ratio and so I'm gonna add that to the list as well and I think that's going to conclude uh, the tier list here so if you have any ideas if you have any questions feel free to post it in the comments uh, if you want more live updates where I the YouTube videos are really just like I what I do after my stream after we have all the information if you want to go through the like, information gathering process be sure to join me on my stream that the link will be in the description